Hey there, and welcome to Ross Reads, the place where science and curiosity meet to tell the most fascinating stories of life. Today's episode is all about how molecular biology has revolutionized embryology. And no, that's not an exaggeration. What was once just observation through a microscope is now a complex molecular narrative, genes turning on and off, proteins acting as messengers, and epigenetic markers guiding cell fate like invisible road signs. So, if you've ever wondered how a single cell becomes a fully formed human being, this one's for you. Grab your coffee and let's dive into the molecular symphony behind life itself. Classical embryology taught us to observe fertilization, cleavage, gastrulation. But molecular biology allows us to understand the mechanisms behind these events. Thanks to advances in genome sequencing, we've gone beyond identifying genes to exploring how they're regulated. The complexity of genetic regulation is far greater than we ever imagined. Gene expression isn't just an on-off switch. It begins with transcription, where DNA wrapped in chromatin must be accessible. Chromatin can be tightly packed heterochromatin or loosely packed euchromatin. And this accessibility is the first layer of control. Then comes post-transcriptional processing, where introns are removed, exons are spliced together, and a functional mRNA is formed. This mRNA is then translated into proteins, the true workhorses of development. Let's talk about what initiates gene expression, the T-A-T-A box. The Tata box is a DNA sequence that serves as a binding site for RNA polymerase, the enzyme responsible for copying DNA into RNA But RNA polymerase doesn't work alone. It needs help from transcription factors, which either activate or repress gene expression. Then we have enhancers and silencers, regulatory DNA elements that increase or decrease the efficiency of transcription. What's amazing is that these elements can be located far from the actual gene and still affect it through DNA looping. Another key player is DNA methylation, where methyl groups are added to cytosines. This generally silences genes and varies depending on the type of cell. It's one of the mechanisms behind epigenetics. Heritable changes in gene expression without changes in DNA sequence. Also, let's not forget alternative splicing, which allows a single gene to produce multiple protein isoforms by combining exons in different ways. This dramatically increases the diversity of proteins in our bodies. Once proteins are made, they're still not done. Post-translational modifications determine their final structure and function. These include cleavage, phosphorylation, and interactions with other proteins or cellular components. For example, cleavage may activate a protein that was previously inactive. This is common in signaling molecules and enzymes. Then we have epithelial mesenchymal interactions, which are absolutely essential in organ development. Epithelial cells and mesenchymal cells communicate and coordinate, shaping organs like the lungs, kidneys, and teeth. This brings us to cell signaling, the way cells talk to one another to ensure proper development. It's like an orchestra. If one instrument plays out of tune, the whole symphony suffers. There are two major types of signaling, paracrine and juxtacrine. Paracrine signaling involves secreted molecules that travel short distances to nearby cells, Juxtacrine signaling, on the other hand, requires direct cell-to-cell contact. A prime example is the notch signaling pathway, which plays a key role in determining cell fate. Then there are fibroblast growth factors, FGFs, which are central to angiogenesis, the formation of blood vessels, as well as neuronal growth and cell differentiation. 
FGFs act on axons, promoting proper wiring of the nervous system. But the real stars of the show are the signaling protein families that orchestrate development. Hedgehog, and TGF beta. Let's break them down. The hedgehog family, particularly sonic hedgehog, shush, is vital in regulating early development. It's considered a morphogen, meaning it forms concentration gradients that instruct cells on how to differentiate. Shh regulates tissue patterning, bilateral body symmetry, vascular development, brain and limb formation. Its mechanism, shh, binds to specific receptors like patched, PTCH, which normally inhibits another protein called smoothened, SMO. When shi binds to PTCH, the inhibition is lifted, SMO activates, and downstream transcription factors like GLI are activated, changing gene expression in target cells. Then we have the WNT pathway, which is essential for cell polarity, limb patterning, brain development, muscle and bone formation. WNT activates disheveled DEVIL, which then interacts with Rho kinases, controlling the cytoskeleton, the internal architecture of the cell. Mutations in genes like FZ, frizzled, or DVL, disheveled, can cause neural tube defects, such as spina bifida. That's how crucial this pathway is. Finally, the TGF-beta superfamily, which includes molecules like BMPs, bone morphogenetic proteins, plays a critical role in apoptosis, programmed cell death matrix regulation, cell differentiation. These proteins bind to serine threonine kinase receptors, activating SMAD proteins, which then move to the nucleus to regulate gene expression. Among all these proteins, sonic hedgehog, SHA, stands out as the master gene of embryogenesis. It doesn't just trigger developmental processes, it defines entire axes of the body such as left-right and dorsal-ventral. Shh, influences. Limb outgrowth, brain compartmentalization, blood vessel formation, and even the establishment of the central nervous system. Its action is based on gradient concentration. Cells receive different messages depending on how much shush they're exposed to. High concentrations may signal neural development, while lower ones trigger skin or muscle cell pathways. Understanding molecular biology in embryology helps us do more than just explain normal development. It helps us understand congenital disorders, design targeted therapies, and perhaps one day guide tissue regeneration. This chapter in Langman's Medical Embryology reminds us that life is not just formed, it's composed layer by molecular layer, like a symphony orchestrated by genes, proteins, and signals we're only beginning to fully understand. If you found this video helpful, educational, or just plain fascinating, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss future episodes here on Ross Reads. And hey, drop a comment. Let me know which molecular pathway you think is the coolest or which topic you want to explore next. Until then, keep asking, keep reading, and keep exploring the science of 